Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Grizzly's Millions, starring Pat O'Brien, Lynn Barry, and Elizabeth Risden. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest producer, Mr. Otto Kruger. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Not long ago, one of Hollywood's busiest screen authors visited a mining town in Colorado to forget the cares of writing. And while there, became intrigued with the gaunt, decaying mansion of the town's most prosperous miner. A giant ruin, ruin of a house. It was with tottering cupolas and echoing towers. Moss-covered walls and shutters creaking in the wind. Well, you can imagine how that might affect the mind of an accomplished mystery writer. But you don't have to imagine, for tonight, we bring you the story inspired by that eerie setting. Grizzly's Millions. A mystery thriller from Republic Pictures, producers of the soon-to-be-released Earl Carroll's Vanities. Among our stars is a gentleman experienced at solving many of the screen's most baffling dramas, Pat O'Brien. With him is a charming lady from Virginia, New England, brown-haired, hazel-eyed Lynn Barry. And third in tonight's cast, in the role that she portrayed so ably on the screen, is Miss Elizabeth Risden. Together, this trio has conspired not only to challenge our wits, but to frighten us out of them into the bargain. And to warm our heartstrings with a strange and tender love, too. For with spring officially two days away, it's only fitting that we add a touch of romance to our story. In fact, a little romance never did anybody any harm. Only it's not always easy to get. Grizzly's millions couldn't buy it. But your pennies can if you spend them on Lux toilet soap. And that, that applies to men as well as women. I have an amusing letter here from a soldier overseas in Paris in which he tells of strolling with a well-bred French girl till the daring hour of 10.30. And he writes, Her mother was hopping mad at our being out after dark, but I eased her temper with a bar of Lux toilet soap that I'd carried all the way from home. So you see, gentlemen, if it's romance that you're after, don't forget to take along Lux Toilet Soap. And ladies, don't forget to use it. Now, the first act of Grizzly's Millions, starring Pat O'Brien as Joe, Lynn Barry as Catherine, and Elizabeth Risden as Leona. <laughs> like the throne of a monarch overlooking his subjects. The huge, sprawling mansion of Grizzly Palmer. Looming in regal isolation high against the mountainside of Palmer City, founded and named by old Grizzly more than 40 years ago. But Grizzly won't live in his mansion much longer. For the past week, he's been dying. And down in town, his sorrowing relatives talk of nothing else. Relatives like his nephew, for instance... John Fry. John runs the Palmer City Funeral Parlor. Well, let's see now, let's see. Yes, sir, Albert, that's probably the finest casket in the state of Colorado. It's certainly the biggest, Mr. Fry. Uncle Grizzly's orders. Now, let me take a look at that plaque. Hmm, sure you got it centered right? Oh, right in the middle. Grizzly Morgan Palmer, pioneer and founder of Palmer City, Colorado. Born January 1st, 1861, died August the blank, 1944. Well, Albert, I guess that's all we can do for now. Uh, what about the August the blank? Well, we can't engrave the date till Uncle dies, can we? No, oh, I guess we can. Yeah, it'd be just like that old tightwad to double-cross me and live till September. I thought Doc Rennie promised you. Yeah, and he better be right. Today's the 25th. Mr. Fry, look. Look who's coming, young Tom. Yeah, stick around, Albert. Maybe you can start engraving that date right now. Well, come in, come in, young Tom. You got news, huh? Well? No, he's still alive, John. Oh, he is, huh? Uh, just sent me into town for some last-minute errands. Uh, casket all finished? Take a look. Uh, send it right up to the house, John. He wants to check up on the job you're doing. Yeah, and I know why he wants it set out. So Ellison Hayes can seal him up as soon as he dies. Ellison's his lawyer, ain't he? Yeah. Guess he's got to do it if Grizzly says so. As long as I've worked for him, he's always said so. Said what? That once he's dead, he wants to be buried. Yeah. Don't want folks standing around gaping at him. Be that as it may, he wants that sarcophagus brought up right now. He's lying out there cussing and groaning. Where are you going? To see the rest of the sorrowing relations. 
He wants you all there tonight to say farewell. I reckon I'll go to the flower shop first and call on June and Fred. Well, be seeing you, young Tom. <laughs> I guess you will at that, John. I'll be 72 next birthday. Won't be long. What you putting fresh flowers in the wreaths for? Because I know Grandpa's dead. I just know he is. And what if he isn't? Just like throwing two dozen roses out the window. Now give me them. Fred. What? How long after he's dead will the will be read? Right away. I've told you a hundred times. Then you better get the money right away, because I've got my reservations to Reno. And if you just dare back all down right, on that alley, right, I'll I'm give gonna... it to you. I'll give it to you. Hello, you two lovebirds. Young Tom. Oh, Grandpa. Grandpa's passed away. Not yet, cheerful. <laughs> He just wants to kiss you goodbye tonight. Should we come for dinner? After dinner. Oh. Where's Leona Palmer? At her bookshop, of course. Where else would she be? She and that snip of a daughter. Oh, just ask. You and your tears. Oh, brother, what a ham. Wipe that silly smile off your stupid face. And start looking for someone else to work <laughs> for you. Say, you don't think I'm going to stay in this two-bit town, do you? Just wait till the funeral's over. Where are you going? Wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> Young Tom. Oh, how is he? Your father-in-law is sinking fast, Leona. Wants everybody up there tonight. Oh, what a shame. Is there anything I can bring him? Maybe a good book. Grizzly wouldn't know what to do with the book, Leona. You know that. He'd probably try to drink it. <laughs> Just you come and bring Maribel. Bye, Leona. Got to see Bob now at the drugstore. What did he say, Mother? Grandpa's sinking fast. Well, it's about time, the drunken old miser. Maribel. Well, it's true. All that money and never giving us a set, not even when Father died. Well, don't... Now, don't upset yourself. We'll soon be far away from Palmer City. Can we take the plane? I want to fly, Mother. I want to fly to Hollywood. We'll be lucky if we get bus tickets. Now, turn around. I'll finish fitting your dress. Oh, you do make lovely dresses, Mother. Wait till they see you in this one. My baby. An actress in Hollywood. I'll be more than an actress. I'll be a star. And I'll have all the clothes I want. Closets full of clothes and fur coats. Hey. Hey, you the station agent? That's right, brother. That train that just pulled out, did you see a man get off? Yes, saw you get off. You wore a dark blue suit and a gray hat. Oh, him, sure. Ask me the way to old Grizzly Palmer's. Probably a king coming to the funeral. A little early, though. Grizzly's still hanging on. How do I get to the Palmer place? That's up that way, side of the mountain. The road ain't too good, though. Ask young Tom there. He works for Grizzly. Young Tom? We call him young Tom to tell him apart from his father. Father's old Tom. What do they call his grandfather? Grandfather? What's he talking about? Hey, Junior. Calling me? Yeah. You mind telling me how to reach Grizzly Palmer's place? You and the old man's will, too? No, no, I doubt it. I don't even know who he is. Ain't never heard of Grizzly Palmer? No, nope, ain't never. I'll be darned. He just built this whole town, that's all. Oh, this whole big thriving city? Sure did. Come out here with nothing but his bare hands, found himself a gold mine and made a million. I I'm going up to the house now, give you a lift? No, no thanks. I'll hire a car. I'd just like to know the way. Well, go out that way. Take the first dirt road, can't miss it. It's all walled in except on the ravine side. Just a great big dump built on top of the mountain. You've got to lie still, Grandpa. You've got to. Then close those blasted windows. Want me to freeze to death? Better close them, Catherine. Yes, Doctor, but I thought you said... He said, what does he know? If he were any kind of a doctor, I wouldn't be kicking the bucket. There's only one thing that's <clears throat> killing you, and that's whiskey. Now, look here, Grizzly. Any time you want another doctor, just say so. I wish you would get Dr. Chester. Dr. Chester. I've forgotten plenty in these backwoods, and I'm not denying uh, it. You calling Palmer City backwoods? Put down that gun, uh, Grizzly. Grandpa, what's the matter with you? Had it under his pillow, Catherine. Had it under his pillow, Catherine. You're not scaring anyone. We know it isn't loaded. Now give it to me. Not loaded, huh? Pull the trigger and see. Oh, you're huh? so smart, aren't you? You're so... <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, will you? Stop you're, it. You're horrible. What if I shot someone? Uh, you took the bullets out and I put them in again. Now, let me have it. I certainly won't. I said let me have it. Catherine, there's no point in upsetting him more. Here. That's better. 
Hello, Grizzly. <laughs> hear the shooting just now? Can't hear nothing outside that door. My granddaughter just tried to murder me. That's a lie. Uh, look, Tom, look, over by the window. John just brought it up from town. How's that for style? Seen it in his shop. My, my, big as a house, ain't it? I want plenty of room in my coffin. When you find out what them kin of yours plan to do with the money, you'll spin around in that thing like a top. What are they planning to do? They're leaving town, all of them, that's what. <coughs> leaving Palmer City? They can't. That's what you think. Yeah, that's what they think. The lawyer's downstairs going over my papers. Get him up here. Get him up here. Now, don't get yourself all excited over nothing. I said to get Allison Hayes. Sure, Grizzly. Ready, go on. Get out, get out, get I'm out. I'm going. <laughs> Thomas City. Thomas City was named after me. And when I'm gone, I want Thomas living here. It's not fair to keep them if they want to leave. Hey, they could have left any time they wanted to. You left, didn't you? Yes, I left. And they saw what happened to me when I did. I warned you. I said I'd take you out of my will, and I did. But that didn't stop you from eloping with that fancy little gambler, did it? Lucky for you, Bensley died. You're lucky you're a widow. Oh, stop it. All right, he died. And I came crawling back. And I also know I'm buried here now for good. I meant it about cutting you off after you left. I never expected you to change your mind. And I haven't. All right. <clears throat> Catherine, uh, when, when I'm gone, what are you going to do? Oh, maybe I'll help Aunt Leon in the shop. She's the only one I care about. Leona? Yeah, she's a good woman, as women go. The others are all right in their way, Grandpa. Don't tie any strings to what you leave them. I don't want a penny of my money to get out of this town. I found it here, and they're going to spend it here or nowhere. Now go see what's keeping that lawyer. I got to see him now. Now. Captain? Oh, come in, Allison. Yeah, you were right. He insisted on changing the will. Oh, but that's terrible. He's let them count on it all their lives. What do you care about them? They've never worried about you. I know how it is to want to get away from here. I'm sorry I'm not a more successful man, Catherine. Maybe if I'd left here, I would have been, but... Well, I always thought this town would grow, and that I'd grow with it. If only my position were different, I wouldn't hesitate a second to ask you. To ask me what? But to marry me, of course. You've never guessed. Alice and I... I'm never going to marry again. Oh, but just because you were unlucky once, dear, that doesn't no, mean... No, that... please. I like you, you know that. But I'm much happier the way I am. Happy? You're not even alive. You haven't been since you came back. I meant what I said, Ellison. Hello? Yes, yeah, just a minute. What's the gatekeeper, Catherine? There's a man to see you, a Harry Walsh. Walsh? He says it's important. Oh, he's a... He was a friend of my husband's. Ask him to come up. All right. Hello? I'll let him in. I'll be in the study, Catherine. Got a lot of papers to get in shape. Call me if you need anything. Thank you for everything, Ellison. She's there in the parlor, Mr. Walsh. Thanks. Well, Catherine? Lewis. Is that all you can say? Who was she, the old dame who shelled me in? Young Tom's wife, Mary. Don't worry, she never met you. Well, I'm not worried about a thing, Catherine. Mind if I put down my hat? Well, surprised to see your husband? Why did you use that other name? Why? Because you wouldn't have let me in. Keep staring at me. If I changed so much, a couple of years in jail would change anybody. So you've been telling people you're a widow? I told them that when I came back here. Couldn't get a divorce, could you? I never tried. When I left you, Lewis, you weren't my husband anymore. That's not what the law says. Meaning what? Meaning that I have every right to share in what is called your worldly goods. I was in Denver a couple of days ago. Paper said old Grizzly was just about dead. He's leaving me nothing. I was cut out when I ran off with you. But you came back. You've got a right to your share of his money, and you're going to get it. I don't want it. No? Well, I do. We're going to get it if I have to wring it out of him penny by penny. Where is he? Upstairs, of course. He's very sick. He'll be sicker when he sees me. You can't go up there. Who's going to stop me? Get out of here or I'll call the police. Lewis, come back. Lewis! Just a minute. I'm coming. You don't have to open the gates. All I want is a little information. Did a fellow in a dark blue suit and a gray hat come through here? Uh, you mean uh, Mr. Walsh? I don't know. One name's as good as another. When did he go in? Oh, a half hour ago. 
Want me to phone the house? No, no thanks. I'll wait here and surprise him. Oh, uh, you think he might come out some other gate? Oh, there ain't any other gate. Uh, this is all the way in and all the way out. Uh, unless he's an angel. No, no, he's no angel. You're the gatekeeper, huh? That's right. Well, here's a couple of bucks. I'll put the car down the road and then I'll walk back here. And just so it won't spoil the surprise, you won't tell anybody I'm here, okay? Why, well, sure. And thanks. Mr. Palmer, may I come in? It's Hayes, Mr. Palmer. Mr. Palmer? Catherine. Catherine, what are you doing? Look. What are you trying... Who is this man? What's happened? He's been shot. You'd better call Dr. Rennie. He's dead? Yes. What happened? Tell me quick before he anyone else... He forced his way in here. I tried to stop him. He, he wanted money. But who is he? My husband. That's Lewis Bentley? Yes. Bentley, but you he said... He used that... the name of Waltz just to get in here. He heard Grandfather was dying and came to demand part of his estate. I hated him so. I always hated him. And you... You shot him? Shot him, but I didn't. I followed Lewis up here. Grandfather was furious. They argued for a couple of minutes, and Lewis said something. Grandfather grabbed the gun and, and shot him. Your grandfather? But Catherine, he... What's the matter with him? Grandfather! Mr. Palmer... Mr. Palmer. Catherine. Yes? Your grandfather couldn't have killed Bentley. Your grandfather's dead. Oh. Now, come on, get hold of yourself here. You must. You say your grandfather shot him. It may be just as well if we leave it that way. Ellison, I didn't kill him. I didn't. Is this the gun? Yes. There's not much question about that. You can smell the gunpowder. Here, hold it a second, dear. I'd better... Oh, the gun. What a fool. What have I done? Done? Fingerprints. I picked up the gun and now you've been handling it. Catherine, we've got to do something. Don't you see how all this looks? Your grandfather can't tell them what happened. You must admit it's a terribly thin story you've told. Will you believe me? Because I want to. I want to protect you so everybody will believe you. Bentley. Would the gatekeeper have recognized Bentley? He never saw him before. No one in town knew him. Then if we could get him out of here without anyone seeing him, we wouldn't have to tell about it at all. What are you thinking of? I didn't kill him. I'm thinking of your safety. Your life, maybe. I can get rid of the gun, but Bentley's body. Even if I got him past the gate, what would I do with him then? Oh, if we only had time, if... Wait a minute. The casket. It's a very large casket. And your grandfather, he gave me the orders. Everyone knows that. He was to be buried at once. At once. Ellison, you're out of your mind. Ellison, No! No, you can't do that. You can't. In just a moment, Mr. Kruger and our stars will return with Act Two of Grizzly's Millions. And now, a business girl and her guest. Oh, that was a grand movie. Helen, you were a peach to ask me to stay overnight with all you have to do. Oh, it's such fun having you, Nancy. Yeah, make yourself comfortable. And if there's anything you want, just sing out. I'll be getting the breakfast things ready for morning. Mmm, super service, I call it. How do you do it, Helen? Do what? Oh, you always seem so well organized, and look it, too. Even when you're the busiest, you have that fresh, right-out-of-a-bandbox look I envy. Well, there are lots of shortcuts to beauty care, you know. For instance, while I'm listening to the late news broadcasts at night, I always brush my hair a hundred strokes to keep it nice and shiny. Mm, that's an idea. But what about that all-important subject of the face? What are you used for that peaches and cream complexion of yours? <laughs> Why, I've been using Hollywood's beauty care for a long time now. Oh, I thought it was something expensive. <laughs> oh, look, darling. Don't you know what Hollywood's beauty care is? Active lather facials with Lux Toilet Soap. I'll demonstrate my beauty facial for you tonight. You'll see how easy it is. It is simple. This regular Lux Soap beauty care that 9 out of 10 screen stars, lovely women everywhere, recommend. Here's what they tell you to do. Cover your face generously with a creamy active lather and work it well in. Then rinse with warm water, splash on cold, and pat dry with a soft towel. Leaves your skin feeling wonderfully smooth. Active lather facials really do make skin lovelier. Recent tests prove that actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time with this daily care. So, if you think your skin could be softer, smoother, truly lovelier, why not begin your Lux Soap Beauty Facial tomorrow? And now, Otto Kruger returns to the microphone. Act two of Grizzly's Millions.
Starring Pat O'Brien as Joe, Lynn Barry as Catherine, and Elizabeth Risden as Leona. Everyone in Palmer City knows that Grizzly Palmer died yesterday of heart failure and alcohol. Everyone also knows that his last instructions were carried out to the letter. He did not wish to be viewed, and no one has viewed him. The casket was sealed immediately, and now in Palmer City the funeral is over. Outside the church, Ellison Hayes comes quickly to Catherine. My car's at the curb. Get in. We can't let this go on, Ellison. We can't. Stop worrying. We had plenty of time yesterday to take care of Bentley. It's the last place in the world they think of looking for him. I'm going to the police. You want to be tried for murder? Well, it couldn't be any worse than this. I've got to tell Ellison. And what about me? Who hid Bentley and then did what, what had to be done? Well, they tried to help you. But the police don't call that help. They call it accessory after the fact. Why did I let you do it? Why? Darling, you really haven't done anything wrong. Grizzly killed Bentley and Grizzly's dead. In time, we'll both forget all about it. By the way... Are you able to burn Bentley's hat? No, not yet. It's still in the hall closet. I'll do it as soon as you get home. Come on, now, buck up. We'll drive out to the cemetery. Oh, uh, Mrs. Bentley? Yes? I'm sorry to bother you at a time like this. My name is Joe Simmons. I tried to see you this morning, but the gatekeeper... Surely you understand, Mr. Simmons. Oh, excuse me, this is Mr. Hayes. How are you? How do you do? I, uh... I'd like to talk to you, Mrs. Bentley, on business. Oh, I'm Mrs. Bentley's lawyer. What kind of business? About Mr. Bentley. I'd like to see him. I'm a widow, Mr. Simmons. My husband is dead. Oh. Well, do you suppose I could see you later, say about 4 o'clock? I'm afraid that's impossible. All the relatives will be at the house at 4 o'clock. I'm reading Mr. Palmer's will. Mm, I see. Well, uh, maybe some other time. Goodbye, Mrs. Bentley. Now, if you good people will stifle your tears, I'll get to the subjects closest to your hearts. Grizzly Palmer's will. Listen carefully, please. I, Grizzly Morgan Palmer, being of sound mind, who hereby instruct my executors, Ellison Hayes and Dr. William Rennie, in the disposal of my worldly goods. First, to my faithful servants, Thomas and Matty Parker, I bequeath an annuity of $500 a month for as long as either of them shall live. Second, and finally, the remainder of all my property and personal effects I bequeath to my granddaughter, Catherine Palmer Bentley, to have and to hold for her lifetime, at her death to be divided equally among my other heirs, at which time I hope they will be too old to think of leaving Palmer City. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the will. You promised me that he'd leave you at least 100000 You promised me the day we were oh, married. Oh, shut up. Oh, the shock of it. I've been counting on it. I even bought some reading. Oh, mother, what'll we do? Oh, I hope he just burns in everlasting misery. Maribel, what a thing to say. Well, it's the truth. With that expression on your face, dear, you wouldn't want it to get wrinkled that way, would you? I'm, I'm really sorry, Aunt Leona. My dear, it certainly isn't your fault. I didn't know he'd changed his will. You know I didn't ask him to. I know you didn't. But my poor baby is certainly very, very disappointed. They've all gone, Catherine. Why did you let him change the will? You know I didn't want his money. I simply carried out his instructions, dear. But Catherine, I want to tell you, please don't think I asked you to marry me because of the money. It doesn't matter. But it does. I care a great deal about you. You've done a great deal to protect me, Ellison, I know. I want to go on protecting you. You will, won't you? Marry you? Well, I think you'd feel safer if legally we couldn't be forced to testify against each other. Well, it's not that I want... Hey, Miss Catherine, a man here to see you. Hello, Mrs. Bentley. Mr. Hayes. I thought Mrs. Bentley told you... Come in, Mr. Simmons. I'll phone you tonight, Ellison. All right. Goodbye, my dear. Well, you must be a very persuasive man, Mr. Simmons. The gatekeeper had orders to keep everyone out except the family. Well, once in a while, this makes me one of the family. I hate to have to flash it. It kind of scares people and spreads talk. I see. Policeman. There's been a series of very phony deals all through the Northwest, Mrs. Bentley. All of them involving your husband. And I followed him from Seattle to Frisco to Denver. 
and out of Palmer City. But I'm getting kind of tired now, and I want to see him. He isn't here. He went through that gate yesterday, and he hasn't come out. This is a very big house, Mr. Simmons, and the estate runs for miles. But you're welcome to search. I've already started. You have? Out there in the hall while I was waiting just now. There's a hat in the hall closet. The same gray hat I followed all the way from Seattle. I can only repeat he's not here. If you're ready to continue your search, I'll have the servants show you around. Thanks, I'm ready. your breakfast, Miss Catherine. How are you feeling? Oh, all right, Maddie. Is he still here, Mr. Simmons? Searched the house till way past midnight and was at it again at five o'clock. Oh, I wish he'd go away. I wish I could go away. Well, why don't you? I mean, for a ride, maybe. Some fresh air do you good. You could ride up to the cabin. Young Tom's got your boots all nice and shined. <sighs> maybe I will. Of course, it looks like rain. Gonna pour before sundown. Oh, let it pour, Maddie. I have a feeling that even getting caught in a storm would do Shut up, horse. Hello, Mr. Simmons. Haven't you enough sense to come in out of the rain? Oh, hello. No, Mr. Bentley's not in here either. Say, it's uh, kind of wet, isn't it? Come in. Thanks. But on one condition. No more questions. Okay, no more questions. Sit down by the fire. Got some coffee going. How'd a girl like you ever come to marry a heel like Bentley? I don't know. Except I was very young at the time. Furious because my grandfather wouldn't let me leave Palmer City. Not even to go to college. And then I... Bentley came along. He meant escape, excitement, everything. We ran off, got married, and started traveling. I soon found out we had a good reason for traveling. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, I stood it as long as I could. Then I left him and came back. I told him that, that Lewis had died. What did he do, Bentley? No questions, remember? Look, I don't enjoy running down chisels, not when it involves people like you. My husband was here, and now he's gone. That's all I know. Bentley hasn't left town. He hasn't even gone through those iron gates. No, because he went out another way. That's the only way. I've looked around and made sure. There's a way no one else knows. Only Ellis and Hayes. It's across the ravine. A big tree fell across the ravine years ago. It made a kind of bridge. It's dangerous, but you can cross and get out through the lower orchard. I used it all the time when I was forbidden to see Lewis. You want me to believe that Bentley left that way? It's obvious, isn't it? I'd like to take a look at that tree. Can it wait until after coffee? Um, yeah, I guess so. Say, that, that's, that smells wonderful. <laughs> careful. Look, you better come back. In a minute. Besides, if I fall, I'd only hit that ledge. Well, we don't issue any guarantees. Say, how deep's the ravine? About 200 feet. Yeah. Say, you must have had a terrific yen for bed. Look out! Holy smoke, what was that? Come back here. Yeah. The edge of the ravine, it keeps falling away whenever there's a heavy rain. Well, I guess you were right. The bridge has been used recently. How could you tell? What? I mean, well, I thought the rain would have washed away his traces. Rain doesn't wash away vines. The tree is covered with vines. They've been cut. Then you believe me. I believe what my eyes see. It's the same thing. Oh, it's nothing of the sort. Bentley never got out this way, and you're amazed that I found out it's been used at all. Now, why don't you tell me the truth? I tell you he's gone. Why don't you leave, too? You'll never find him here, and you'll only make trouble for me. You don't need any help when it comes to making trouble. Look, uh, take a tip from a guy who's seen a lot of people in trouble, Mrs. Bentley. There's always someone who can run just a little bit faster than you can. Why don't you slow down and turn around? All right. Be at the house this afternoon. I'm going to call the police chief. Adams? Yes, I'd like you there, too. Well, that's more like it. That's a lot more like it, Mrs. Bentley. Mm -hmm. 
I thought you should know what I'm going to do. What happens to me when you tell them the truth? I intend telling just one more lie. That you had nothing to do with it. You'll be tried for murder. The people who know me won't believe it. I know you. So you still think I killed him. And you still want to marry me. Oh, no. It couldn't have been the money, could it, Allison? You're not very grateful, Catherine. I'm willing to marry you, so I can't be forced to testify that I practically saw you kill Bentley. To the legal mind, isn't that blackmail? I'm warning you. Don't go to the police. I'm sorry I waited this long. Catherine, listen to reason. I... Yes, who is it? It's me, Allison. Maribel. Well, come in. Oh, Allison, come over to the shop right away. The most exciting thing. Oh, hello, Catherine. Hello, Maribel. Sit down. I'm just leaving. Goodbye, Allison. Goodbye, Catherine. Well, speak of the devil. What are you trying to tell me? Guess who's in the shop? Dr. Rennie and the police chief, and they're talking to Mother. Why? Well, the police got an anonymous note, and guess what it said? It said that my dear grandfather didn't just die of drinking too much. He was poisoned. Poisoned? Yes, and that Catherine did it. Well. Ellison, if we can prove it's true, then the money would all come to the rest of us, wouldn't it? You'd be a very wealthy young lady, Maribel. Oh, and I can go to California just like I planned. Oh, no. Well, why not? Just when you're beginning to grow up into about the prettiest girl I've ever seen. Why, Ellison. Well, I guess you and I had better run down to the shop right away. That's plain, malicious rubbish, Ellison. Somebody wrote this note to get even with Catherine. Is that what you think, Chief? I hate anonymous letters, but something like this can't be disregarded. You, Doctor? The note says Grizzly was poisoned. If that's true, then as a doctor, I've made a horrible mistake. Right or wrong, I must know the truth. Anybody can make a mistake, Doc. Grizzly drank so much uh, uh, liquor, uh, enough to kill ten men. I might have only looked for what I expected. I, I'm, I'm not the doctor I used to be. I, I told Grizzly to get someone else. Maybe he was poisoned. I don't know, but I do know Catherine would never do it. What possible reason would she have? She didn't even know he changed his will. Is that what she told you? Why, she... She what? Come on, Allison. Well, Grizzly told me she'd been after him for months to change the will. And the minute he did, she killed him. Mary Bell. Oh, no, I can't believe it. It did seem curious why she insisted on the coffin being sealed right away. But you said Grizzly re requested that. He wanted it that way. No. Catherine asked me to say it. Well, are we just going to stand around here and let her get away? Now, wait a minute. We're jumping to conclusions awful fast. Don't interrupt, Chief. Yeah? Catherine Bentley just stopped by the station. Asked, could you come out to the house? You and Dr. Rennie, she'd like to see you. Hello, Adam speaking. Oh, Chief, this is Hayes. Yeah, listen. I, um, I just wondered if you found out anything. She got awful mad when I told her about the note and how come Grizzly was buried so quick. Angry, huh? Yeah, didn't have a chance to ask her much more. What do you mean? Well, we decided as long as there's any suspicion of Grizzly being poisoned, there was only one thing we could do. Exhume the body tonight and hold a postmortem. Oh, what did Catherine have to say about that? She didn't say anything. She went white as a sheet and fell to the floor. Yet, Maddie? No, she ain't awake yet. You mind if I wait here? Certainly I mind. Why didn't you go back to town with Adams and the doctor? Hound and Hurdle, she faints, and then sitting here ready to pounce on her the second she wakes up. What did Ronnie give her? Just a pill to put her to sleep. It's all right. I'm awake. How do you feel, dear? A little groggy. Maddie? Yes? Do you mind? I think Mr. Simmons wants to talk to me alone. Alone? In your bedroom? We'll observe all the house rules, Maddie. You can leave the door wide open. You bet I will. Well? You promised me the truth about Bentley. Tell me something first. Are they really going to do it? Are they really going to open the grave? Yes, I'm afraid so. When? Right away, tonight. Look, Mrs. Bentley. Your grandfather's grave is Adam's worry, not mine. Now... Really, I hate to keep the needle on the same record, but I still want to know where Bentley is. I think you will be interested in my grandfather's grave because that's where you'll also find Louis Bentley. And whatever you must be thinking of me now, you don't have to say it. I deserve anything that happens to me. It was a horrible thing to do, Mrs. Bentley. It was also very stupid. All you had to do was tell the jury you killed him in self-defense. And with his record... 
Well, they'd have pinned the medal on you. Who says I killed him? He broke into the room. They quarreled and my grandfather shot him. And then the old man died of shock. Yes. And why did you try to hide Bentley? Because he told me I'd be arrested for murder, that nobody would believe me. Who told you that? My, my grandfather, before he died. Well, I stopped running away from trouble, didn't I, Mr. Simmons? Only it seems I've turned around to face it a little too late. Well, I was sent here to find Bentley, and it seems I've done that. Of course, I'll have to be at the post-mortem. Uh, look, about the old man being poisoned. Is there any truth in that? That's too ridiculous even to answer. If you want some advice? If you haven't any more on your conscience than Bentley, stay and face it. But if there's more than, well, that I don't know about, then, then I guess you couldn't make things any worse if you did run away. Well, that's all I have to say. Because I shouldn't have said that. I probably won't be seeing you anymore, Mrs. Bentley. I wish I could help you. Thank you. Well, good night. Good luck. Good night. Number, please. 791. Hello? Ellison? Catherine, I thought I should warn you. They're going to open the grave tonight. But no matter what happens, I want you to know I'm not going to involve you. You can count on that. I don't think I can count on anything. There's only one thing I can do. I've got to get there before the authorities. Oh, you can't. That's ghastly. Keep quiet. I never should have tried to help you. Now that I'm in it, I've got to see it through. I'm leaving here right now. I'll meet you in the lower orchard. And hurry now before we're both hanged. No, please. Don't even try to do that. You'll be caught. Ellison, don't you hear me? You can't do it because I've already told. Hello. Hello, Ellison. Answer me, Ellison. I know you're still there. I can hear you breathing. I can hear your wristwatch ticking. Ellison. Hello. Hello. I... Who's there? Who is listening on the extension? Tom? Matty? Where is everybody? Who was at that phone? I can see you. Tom, is that you? Wait, who is it? Who is it? We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. We'll be back in just a moment with Act Three of Grizzly's Millions. Now, here comes Sally. Greetings, Sally. You look very happy tonight. I should think so, Mr. Kennedy. My brother Jim phoned us. He got his leave, and he'll be home tomorrow. Isn't that swell, Sally? I'll bet you and your mother were busy today. We went on a regular shopping spree. Squandered all our red points on a steak. Squandered in a worthy cause, Sally. I can just imagine how good home's going to look to Jim. We tried to think of everything we could to please him. You know, Mr. Kennedy, we even got an extra supply of Lux toilet soap. Oh, so Jim's a Lux soap fan like the rest of his family. You bet. Last time he was home, the first thing he wanted after that long trip was a hot bath. Gee, Mom, he said, I've been dreaming about a good leisurely bath with all the trimmings. A thick, soft bath towel and plenty of soap that lathers. Well, he won't be disappointed in Lux toilet soap, Sally. Men go for that extra rich, creamy lather Lux soap gives, even in hard water. You know, Mr. Kennedy, I think men enjoy little luxuries like a fine bath soap just as much as women do. You think right, Sally. Say, here's our chance to drop a hint to women everywhere who do the family shopping. Why don't we remind them that Lux soap makes a truly luxurious bath soap their men folks are sure to appreciate. Don't forget to tell them how economical Lux soap is, Mr. Kennedy. Yes, that's important these days, Sally. Lux toilet soap is, is a quality soap made of the finest ingredients, but it's thrifty, too. Each fine white cake can be used to the last thin sliver. Lux toilet soap is hard milled, you see. Won't get mushy or soft. Why not make sure there's always a cake of Lux toilet soap in your bathroom? And now, Otto Kruger returns to the microphone. Act three of Grizzly's Millions, starring Pat O'Brien as Joe, Lynn Barry as Catherine, and Elizabeth Risden as Leona. Two hours have passed since Catherine rushed into the night in pursuit of a shadowy figure. 
someone who ran swift and sure to the fallen tree that bridges the ravine, then paused there and waited for the girl. Meanwhile, in Palmer City, Police Chief Adams, Dr. Rennie, and Joe Simmons have made two ugly discoveries. They have found the body of Lewis Bentley. They have also found that Grizzly Palmer died of arsenic poisoning. Joe has suddenly decided to drive back to the Palmer Mansion. With him, white and shaken, is Dr. Rennie. I'm not fit to be a doctor. Why, any first-year intern knows arsenic poisoning and sees it, but not me. No, no. I, I blamed it on the liquor he drank. I... Take it easy. Willie, the old man was murdered. If it had been arsenic, it would have been something else. Oh. How are you going back to the house? You found your man. You found Bentley. Oh. What do you mean, oh? You're going to arrest Catherine. No, that's Adam's job. He's going to get her in the morning. I've known Catherine all her life. Would have sworn she'd never hurt a fly. Then off she goes and kills both of them. How can you figure it out? I can't. That's why I'm going back. I just can't figure it out. Slow up, son. There's the gate. Coming? Hey, what do you want around here this time of night? All right, open the gates and hurry up. Oh, the detective. Yeah. Mrs. Bentley asleep? Uh, how in Tony would I know that? Oh, uh, evening, Doc. Has she gone out, has she? Uh, no, mister. She hadn't gone out. That's all I want to know. could she have gone? Even if Catherine wanted to, how could she escape? The gateman said... Wait a that... minute. We're coming back, young Tom and Maddie. She ain't here. She ain't nowhere in the house. What are you trying to do? What do you want, Hubbard? Stay here, the three of you. Keep searching. I'll be back later. Where are you going? To the ravine. Don't stand there. Look for her. Hang on. Hang on now. Just a couple of feet more. There. There. Okay. If you hadn't have come. If you hadn't have come. No, 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 no. Don't try to get up. Just, just rest a minute. You're all right. All right. Go ahead and ball if you want. I couldn't have held on much longer. It was awful. You knew that tree wasn't safe. You shouldn't have tried to get out that way. What if you hadn't landed on the ledge? What if I hadn't come when I did? For a girl as smart as you, you pulled some of the dumbest tricks I've ever seen. But I wasn't trying to cross. Oh, no. I wasn't. Someone pushed me. Oh, now, look. There was someone in the house tonight. I followed him here. Then suddenly someone or something came up out of the darkness and tried to... Tried to, Try to shove you over? Yes. Well, if it went for the ledge, you've got to believe me, Joe. Oh, so now it's Joe, huh? Okay. As a matter of fact, I kind of like that. But I don't like your story. Who'd want to do a thing like that? I don't know. Did anyone know you were running away? I wasn't running away. Why would I want to run away? For two of the best reasons in the world. They opened the grave. I'm glad they did. Before anyone else could get there. What are you trying to... Nothing. They held a post-mortem. Adams is picking you up in the morning. Suddenly, I... I feel as if I were clean again. No, I had no business coming back, but... Well, I just can't stand to see you get caught. I want to help you. I guess I'm just the me number one sucker. So that's what you think? Sure, that's what I think. Because I care what happens to a girl who do the things that you do. Bentley, I can understand and forget. But the old man, that, that's something else. To poison an old guy who trusted you. Poison? What are you talking about? I won't be accused of such a thing. Whoever sent that anonymous note knew what he was talking about. Arsenic. I didn't do it. I didn't. I've only been trying to hide something I didn't do. Then why were you running away? But I wasn't, Joe. Can't you understand? Somebody killed my grandfather, and whoever it was, he tried to kill me, too. Look at me. You didn't do it, did you? No, Joe. No. I want to believe that. I gotta believe it. I don't know why, but... See, all at once, it's like Christmas morning. As a matter of fact, it is morning. Come on, we're going back to the house. What are you going to do? That's my racket catching murderers, and this is one I'm going to enjoy catching. Come on, give me your hand. I'll help you up. Thanks. Oh, ooh. What's the matter? My hands, they're all cut. Let me see. Oh, come on, we better hurry. <laughs> She's all right, isn't she, Doc? A few bruises. Her hands were cut up a bit, too. She's going to bed. Really, Joe, I simply can't understand. Yeah, yeah, I know. It took me a little while, too. Look, uh, Doc, whoever killed Grizzly Palmer tried to murder Catherine. 
Except no one would have called it murder. Everything would have pointed towards suicide. I'm very fond of that girl. I hope you're right. Where's young Tom and Maddie? Going back to their room. Good. Get Adams on the phone. Tell him Cabin's had an accident and she's unconscious. Unconscious? Tell him she is. Tell him she's in no condition to talk for another 24 hours and then um, see. It's, it's almost dawn now. Tell Adams it's absolutely impossible for Captain to leave here all day. And what about you? He knows you came here. I'll explain everything to him later on. But right now, I want you to lay it on good. Tell him I've gone, the Captain's all alone, and... Now, if you do that, in a couple of hours, everybody in town is going to know about it. Then the murderer will know about it, too. And that's just what I want. He'll know he'll have to finish the job tonight. <laughs> I don't think I can stand this much longer, Joe. What time is it? It's almost 11. I better get back to my closet. Who's in the house? Only Maddie. Doc Bernie made up an excuse to get young Tom into town. The doctor, where is he? I spotted him near the gate. And Mr. Adams? On the grounds. Oh. What's the matter? My hands. I still don't know how you were able to hang onto the ledge with your hands cut like that. I didn't cut them until you were pulling me up. Your glasses must have dropped. My glasses. They must have fallen out of your pocket. I don't wear glasses. But I saw them there. The broken glass and frame. Wait a minute. Ellison Hayes wears glasses, doesn't he? Yes, to read with. He spoke with him on the phone last night. He told you to go to the ravine. It all fits in, Catherine. Ellison? Of course he wanted you to marry him. He'd get all the money. He talked Grizzly into leaving everything to you. And then when you turned him down, when you were going to tell the police about the grave, he figured he had to get rid of you. Now, if I can find those broken glasses, if I can prove they were Ellison's... There's only one oculist in town, Richardson. He lives right over his office. No, I couldn't leave you alone that long. Ellison may be too close. Wait a minute, I'll phone him. What's his number? 791. Operator. Hello? 791. Hello? Uh, Mr. Hayes? Mrs. Simmons, I'd like to stop by and talk to you for a minute. You going to be in? Sorry, I was just leaving. I'd appreciate it if you'd wait. I can be there in half an hour. All right. I'll wait a half hour. Thanks, I'll hurry. Joe, you can't make it in half an hour. I know it. But Hayes won't dare go out now till I see him. No, you just relax. I'll be back before you know it. I'll, I'll send Maddie in to stay with you. Be careful, Joe. Sure. Maddie. Well, Maddie. Maddie went into town, Mrs. Simmons. Who's that? Oh, hello, Aunt Leona. Maddie phoned me and asked me to sit with Catherine. Oh, gee, that's fine. I just the second got here. Don't leave her, will you? Oh, of course not. Is she still unconscious? Well, yes. I brought her some nice hot soup. I'm sure it'll do her good. You know what, Aunt Leona? I think Catherine may come to at that. Mm-hmm. You just tell her that Joe said to sit up and drink her soup. Well, if you say so, Mr. Simmons. Go on in now and turn on the light. Bye. Catherine, dear. Mr. Simmons told me to tell you to sit up and drink your soup. Catherine, can you hear me? Hello, Aunt Leona. Well, look at you. They told me in town you were still unconscious. Did you say soup? Yes, dear. Mm, wonderful. I'm starved. Catherine, I just don't understand all this. Don't try to. It's pretty complicated. Just try to believe that I've done nothing wrong and all this, well, it's... It's just a means of catching a murderer. And you know who it is? I... I think I do. Joe's gone into town to verify it. Be prepared for a shock, Aunt Leona. You'll know who it is by morning. Yes, dear. Drink your soup now while it's nice and hot. Well, what's your rush? Mrs. Vandlewurst? Oh, she'll be all right. Just open the gate. You didn't leave her all alone up there, did you? I let Maddie through here just a little while ago. Of course she's not alone. Her aunt's there. Leona Palmer? Yeah. Well, how could Leona Palmer be in there? She didn't come through here. What did you say? I said Leona Palmer didn't come through these gates. Oh, the soup was wonderful, Aunt Leona. Oh, I'm so sleepy. Do you good to rest? And I'll sit here with you. Aunt Leona? Yes? Yeah? You... You look so different. Your eyes. <laughs> Grandma, what 
big eyes you have. That's because I'm wearing my sewing glasses. They have such thick lenses, dear. I lost my other glasses last night. I can't imagine where. Lost your glasses? It's too bad. Lots of glasses lost. My hands. Cut my hands on somebody's glasses. You did what? Aunt Leona. Maddie. Would you ask Maddie to come here? Matt is in town, dear. Everyone's in town. I... I think I'll... Dr. Rennie... Get Dr. Rennie. I'm, I'm beginning to hurt all over. Stay where you are, dear. Please. Please what? Please go away. No, Catherine, I can't do that. I think I could sleep if you just left me alone. You will sleep. I wanted you to go to sleep quietly, never knowing. But you do know, don't you? I can see that you know. I thought I was being so careful. I never realized I dropped my glasses at the ravine. You... You pushed me. I didn't want to do it. I didn't mind killing Grizzly. I had to so that Maribel could have the money while she was young and lovely. I wanted to see her out of this dusty little town with the whole world giving her everything she should have. And then he found out that we planned to leave here. He changed his will, left everything to you. You who didn't need it or want it. Do you hear me, Catherine? Mm -hmm. You didn't think that mousy little Aunt Leona could make a plan like that, did you? You never remembered how you confided in me about the tree over the ravine. How you used to sneak out and meet Lewis Bentley. I used that bridge night after night. I put the poison in Grizzly's liquor. I came back here to see how close to death he was. I saw Grizzly shoot Lewis. I saw Grizzly die, and I was glad. Then Ellison read the will. And I knew that before Maribel could be free, I had to get rid of you, too. <gasps> Ellison, what a stupid young man. He had his plans, too, didn't he? He doesn't know about me. But all the time he was helping me and not knowing it. Of course, he wanted to get you at the cemetery. He knew they'd find you. He knew when he spoke to you they were already there, Chief Adams and the rest. Yes, I know all about it. I was the one you heard on the telephone extension. I was the one you followed. I didn't like to do it, Catherine. I'm sorry to have to do this now. But I must... For my daughter. A pillow. Over your face. It... It won't hurt you, dear. The soup you drank. There were sleeping powders in it. I've saved some to take myself. When they come back, they'll find us. Except I'll only be asleep. A pillow. A pillow. Get away from her. Hurry, Joe. Black coffee. How is she? Can you tell? Sleeping powder, she said. Come on now. Get some egg whites and salt water and put that coffee on. How is she? Can't you tell? We'll know in a little while. We've got to keep her on her feet. I'll... Leona. Leona's gone. Well, let her go. Adams is out there. Doc, you gotta save her. You gotta. <laughs> Let's keep her walking around the room, Joe. Look, you see? She's coming around. Catherine. Yeah, Catherine. I said keep her walking. No, I'll walk till my feet drop off. I doubt if that'll be necessary. Another half hour, maybe. Doc, Simmons. In here, Chief. How is she? Oh, she's, she'll be all right. And Leona? Dead. We chased her that tree you told us about, Simmons. She started over it like a cat. Then I don't know what happened. Whether she did it on purpose or not. Anyway, she stopped for a second, and it was almost like she was praying. We found her at the bottom of the ravine. Poor devil. Well, she was like a devil. Made my blood run cold listening to her. She confessed everything. Joe and I heard her outside the door. Well, you're lucky you were here to hear her. That's all I can say. If that caveman hadn't called me back, I'd still be chasing Allison Hayes. He'll be taken care of if you ask me. Hey, I Doc. do something. Hey, Doc. Look at her eyes. She's opening her eyes. Catherine. Joe. Joe. Well, Chief, suppose you and I go downstairs and get us a nice cup of coffee. Coffee? There's a whole pot of it right under your nose. I said, suppose we go downstairs and get us some coffee. Oh. Oh, sure. Sure does. Joe, darling. Joe. Wake up, sleepyhead. It's going to be a wonderful day. And 
now our stars of the evening, Pat O'Brien, Lynn Berry, and Elizabeth Risden, come to the footlights to receive our thanks for their spine-tingling and most excellent performances. <laughs> it seems to me, Otto, that you're, well, you're taking it pretty easy tonight. So well, Pat, you got to be my line. age, you deserve to take it easy. You mean as the years wear on and I begin to shave that I can look forward to producing luck some Monday night? I think so, Sonny. I can pick my own leading lady, Pop. Quite a responsibility, Pat, picking the right girl for the right part. Well, it's the kind of responsibility I'd like to take on when I'm young. Well, uh, maybe we can make a deal, Pat. If you produce Lux, uh, will you use me in the cast? If we have a good juvenile role, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, Otto, Elizabeth makes a pretty scary murderess for someone so gentle in real life. I'm wondering about my patients at the Sawtell Veterans Hospital, where I work as a Red Cross nurse's aide. Well, how come you're worrying, Elizabeth? Well, they've been listening tonight, and they've never seen this other side of my nature. <laughs> when I bring them their trays tomorrow... <laughs> <laughs> well, they've been scared to touch a thing, and I don't blame them. Pat, don't tell me you're easily frightened. The great detective who always makes them come clean... Yes, Lynn, but I believe in making them come clean the easy way. By giving them Lux Toilet Soap. <laughs> well, I can tell from Lynn's lovely complexion that she has her own Lux Toilet Soap. Yes, Otto, I use it faithfully. It's really a wonderful complexion care. Yes, I agree, Lynn. I've been in pictures a long time. I'm always swarmed by Lux. Well, the best way I know of saying thanks is to tell you of a treat that we've got in store for you all. This treat is in store for you next Monday night. What is it, Otto? A play that's truly epic. Charles Dickens' masterpiece, A Tale of Two Cities. Starring Orson Welles and Rosemary DeCamp. It's the immortal drama of a great love and a thrilling sacrifice against the exciting background of the 18th century French Revolution. Well, congratulations, Otto. It's a great story. We'll be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, and thanks a million. A grisly million. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when Lux Radio Theater presents Orson Welles and Rosemary DeCamp in A Tale of Two Cities. If you knew you were neglecting a way to help speed the war's end, you'd be quick to correct that oversight, I know. But the fact is that many housewives, far too many, still aren't saving those waste fats and greases so essential to our all-out military effort. The shortage is critical. From today on, save every drop of precious fats and greases. Strain them into a clean can, rush them to your butcher. He'll give you two red ration points plus four cents for each pound. Pat O'Brien is currently appearing in RKO's Having Wonderful Crime. Lynn Barry appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, which is now celebrating its 30th anniversary. She can soon be seen in the motion picture Captain Eddie. Elizabeth Risden is now appearing in the RKO production Tall in the Saddle. Heard in tonight's play were Carlton Cadell, Franklin Parker, Paul Theodore, Norman Field, Eddie Marr, Ann Stone, Gloria Fisher, Earl Keane, Joe Granby, Griff Barnett, Ed Emerson, Horace Murphy, Charles Seal, and Gwen Delano. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John N. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear A Tale of Two Cities with Orson Welles and Rosemary DeCamp. Surprise your family with luscious cakes in spite of shortages. Get Aunt Jenny's sensational new One Bowl Recipes. Ten wondrous cakes requiring no butter. Glamorous frosting, sugar-saving tips galore. Hurry, get Spry's new cake booklet free now at Leading Grocers. Or write Aunt Jenny, Box 78, New York 8, New York. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of A Tale of Two Cities with Rosemary DeCamp and Orson Welles. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>